here is a close-up of where the little noisemakers. This one has a different sound. The sound depends on the thickness of the clay and the size of the little um, noisemakers that are on the inside. Where my little mark was, and that's where my mark is going to be right down here. Okay, now I'm just going to smush that together for temporarily. And I'm going to cut this about half an inch away from where it's going to meet the other piece of clay. So there's a piece that we can use this flat. All right. Now, as I always say, score, slip, score, slip. Scratch and attach, right, scratch and attach. And then I'm gonna take some water on a sponge and just go over that. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. Now the two, the two rain sticks that I showed you at the beginning of our video here were made by um, high school students. Okay, I'm gonna roll that over and stick it. Okay, my newspaper coming apart. Now don't panic if it's not perfectly round because actually that probably add some music tones to it that you wouldn't have had otherwise. Mush this together. And even this part doesn't have to be perfect. This can be jagged. You can leave your little fingerprints in there if you want to. So your clay is going to be thick enough that you can smooth this without worrying about uh, going through it. I caution you about using water and a sponge on this because the more moisture you add to it, the weaker it's going to be and you will have something that's maybe a triangular shape tube, which is okay too. I've seen some that are made by students uh, that were square. I've seen triangular shape. The traditional shape is round. And of course, rattles are used in all kinds of uh, native type ceremonies, but um, but they're kind of nice because they're different, they're interesting, they're musical instruments. Okay, so this is just strengthening the walls. I'm just using a rib to smooth it out. You can put decoration on here for depending on the age of kids I will if this, the younger they are the the more I emphasize putting their name on the thing really big uh, big letters to put their name on it because well if you're a teacher you know why <laughs> bless their little hearts they can't remember what it looked like You can see how many, how many little, I think there's at least 50 or 60 here. Um, I lost count, but I think for, for a rattle that's no bigger than, I think this is about 12 inches high. I think that that would be enough. So I'm going to stop there. If you're making one of the long, uh, 
if you're making one of these long ones that is at least 24 inches and had to be put into the kill tilted like this and, and stood up, um, that's, that's probably 28 or 29 inches long. This one is at least 26 or something. Um, so these, I would put no less than 100 little balls in there, but I think this one will do with, um, with 50, 60. There's already about 20 in there, so I think, I think that's gonna be enough. I took some of the newspaper out of the center of this with some long tweezers. Here's one of my little things I wound up, but I wanted to get that out of there so I'd have room for lots and lots of, um, of little noisemakers. So you're not going to put tape on them or anything. You just wrap them up like that and stick them in there. Um, by the time they get fired, they're not going to be sticking to each other because they're going to mostly be dry. And which is good. So you're going to make hundreds and hundreds. <laughs> no, I think you need at least a hundred of these and. Um, because the more you put in there, the better this thing is gonna sound when it's, when it's all said and done. And if you have adults helping, you can have the kids uh, you know, they can help each other with this. Some kids are gonna be real fast with it and some are gonna be slower. The larger the little ball is, the more clunky the rattle is going to sound and the lower the frequency or the pitch of the tone it's going to give off. So if they want it to sound like a real rain stick, they need to be cautioned about the size of their little dinghies. Also, that hole in the bottom, uh, uh, you know, that I put in the end of it, uh, you're going to have quite a bit of ash come out of this when you uh, bring it out of the kill from all this newspaper burning. And so it's helpful to have holes that you can get it out with or through. So you, you may want to take it out outside the classroom to shake all the the ash out of it. Okay, I have I have five left and I don't think I can stick them in this thing. I've got them pretty packed full, but none of the little uh, balls can touch each other. They need to be separated by a layer of um, newspaper to keep them from sticking to each other. So I'm going to set this here and now we're going to put the um, the other end of this on. So scoring score, whoops, wrong side, scoring And you're probably wondering, well, how does how does it make that noise? All of those little pieces of clay in there are going to um, be released from the newspaper, and they'll be independent of each other, so that after this is fired.
Um, so after it's fired, they will rattle around in there. But we're going to add something to make it sound like rain. And that is the part that most people don't know about. I mean, this part is pretty easy. You can, you can, you know, you can look at this and see how it's built quite easily. So, this is the easy part, but it's also the, the learning part for your students, just how to how to put something together, roll out a slab, uh, to score and slip, um, and so forth. Now, you can decorate this, you can put texture on it, and like I said before, you definitely want your kids to put their names on them, put another hole in the, in the end of it, And I'm, I think that's not a, too big of a hole because you're going to have some ash from the newspaper coming out of here. And so, let's see. You could probably take a pencil and don't push it all the way in, but just, you know, make it round. So put the pencil in there. Okay, now lay it down. This is the good part. Okay, we want a smooth surface. We don't want any junk here to make any. So you can put some kind of a texture, design, whatever you want on the outside of this. I'm just going to roll it for a few minutes here and make sure that I have the ends kind of going this way with the body of it. Now, I'm just going to let you figure out how smooth and how much, how much fuss you want to put into the outside of that. So I'm just going to set it up. I'm going to turn this. <clears throat> what I want to accomplish is a spiral design or line to follow on the outside of this. Okay, so you can see my little line. Okay, now let's put you back because I had your had you guys sitting on this part. So now I have a spiral line to follow. And it doesn't, you don't have to just totally stick right to it because that's just a suggestion. And you can tighten it up if you want. You can put uh, something in between. So let's talk about these nails and things that you can put in here without them melting in your, um, in your kiln. I'm going to fire this to cone six. That's about 22, I think it's 2230 or somewhere around that is the temp the high temperature on cone six. Anything below that is also going to be okay. I use these little finishing nails. Um, let me put this on something you can see. Okay, I'll lay them. I'll lay them right here. This is a finishing nail. Below is called a finishing nail and it almost doesn't have any kind of a little top on it at all. It's to pretty much bury it in the piece of wood. 
Um, so you can use that. You can use these little tiny nails and they have a little bit of a head on it. So also you can use these and everybody knows these as carpet tacks. These will not go very far because they're pretty short. They're only probably three eighths of an inch or less than half of an inch or so. Um, these won't melt, but the, the advantage to these is that they have an irregular top on them. The head of it is kind of oval shaped or some of them are square. Uh, the nail itself, um, this part of it is either triangular or square. They're real irregular. You can, these are useful in um, getting something that has a steampunk look to it. So you can just stick these in there as decoration. And I'll show you. I'll just poke one in my, in my uh, rain stick here just to show you. So you're going to poke it all the way in. And it will just, see there it is right there. And it will just stay there. It won't have much to do with the sound of your rain stick. The ones that are going to affect the sound are, are going to have to be at least an inch long, like this one is about an inch, inch long. And these are about, this one is about, a, let me hold this up. This one is about an inch and a half. So do not buy galvanized nails. The galvanization that is on a nail tends to um, make a, a fume when it's fired that is not good for your breathing. So you don't want anything that's galvanized. These that I'm showing you are okay to use. So what will happen, you're gonna stick these in here before it's glazed. And then when you glaze it, the glaze will make kind of a little lump there and part of the nail will probably show. Let's see, on this, I think I'm going to put another carpet tack right down here at the bottom. And then there's about two inches between there and there. And it doesn't, so all I'm doing here, let's see, can you see? I'm just going to stick that in there. And it may feel like it is hitting your uh, newspaper or your little, the other little things that you've poked into there. But just go ahead and shove it in. And get it, don't don't distort the shape of your of your rain stick you just want to put those in there just get them in as far as you can and that's good what happens in the after it's fired the little clay pieces that you've wrapped up and put inside are now independent and free to fall or hit these or whatever and as they tumble, they're going to make a sound. And since it's hollow inside, the sound they make is going to be against each other. So mostly I'm spacing these now. I'm not... Um, Let's see, I'm going to put that one about, I'm putting them about half inch apart. Remember that the clay shrinks. And as this shrinks, it will tighten up around the nails and hold them in. So there's not going to be a danger of these um, coming out after 
after it's fired. So we'll come back before we put it in the kiln and we'll make sure all of them are, are stuck in there really well. So I'm gonna come over here. And some of them may stick up a little bit above the, the glaze is gonna fill that up. So don't worry about that too much. You don't want them sticking up a half an inch above, but um, the glaze will um, the glaze will fill that in, and it'll look nice. So let's see. Put this one here. Put one of these. Those little carpet tacks are really good for a uh, steampunk look on things. Little wheels or just mechanical looking stuff. Notice that as I'm rolling this, you can see how some of these, um, these little nails down here are beginning to lay down and behave themselves. There. Yeah, let's cover that up a little bit. Okay. Yikes. Okay. Oh, I wonder if I put that one in there too far because I don't see it anymore. It sure did. I think it's in there. Okay. Now I'm going to turn that that way. Okay, so I'm going to finish doing this. Now this will get bisque fired first. And so you can make sure that all the little pieces of clay that are inside are, are independently moving before you fire it. So that you'll know that it's going to be okay. So then you only put glaze on the outside of this. My, my line got a little wobbly on this side, so. Okay. So I'll have to compensate for that just a bit. Okay. For some reason, my kids, even uh, high school kids, the the most fun, they they couldn't wait to get to this part where they were sticking the nails into it. Um, in fact, it was hard to get them to do the other part first and do it well enough and not just rush ahead to get to this part. Why? I do not know. <laughs> I just... Yes, they like to stick nails in things. But also, as in uh, a lot of things in public schools, there's not always enough stuff to go around. And that's been their experience uh, in lower grades. And the ones that lag behind, usually, as far as the supplies are concerned, the ones that lag behind a little bit or go slower end up without everything that they need to finish their project because the other kids rushed, rushed, rushed. And even though their, their little project wasn't 
made as well or something sometimes. But I assured my kids that if there wasn't enough left of the nails, that I would go buy some more. Nails are cheap. And I wasn't going to have any of them not have enough to finish their project. If they went ahead and finished their project and did a good job, I made sure that they had what they needed, even if, uh, and most of the time, I started to say, even if I had to go spend my own money, but most of the time I did spend my own money anyway because the administration in the school I was in didn't feel that that art was important. And so we ended up, the art teachers almost always had to buy stuff with their own money, which is pathetic. But that's the way it is. Art teaches kids so much. There's just so much cross-curriculum stuff. I mean, I taught tetrahedrons when we made kites and taught them a little bit about aerodynamics when when we made kites. And there, there were just so and math. Not to mention the math that's involved in it. Um, art has so much to do with everything else, everything else. And, okay, so I'm going to put a carpet tack down there at the bottom like I did on this one. And then, in the middle of this, so I've got, i try to roll that around on them so they'll poke in there. It'll, it'll soften it up because um, the newspaper that's on the inside will uh, absorb some of that moisture and it'll soften up and you'll be able to stick the nails in there. Okay, so what I'm wanting to do now is I want to, uh, let's see. I think I'm going to skip over here and do a spiral of carpet tacks just because they won't really poke into the clay that much but I mean they're not going to make any difference as far as how it sounds because it didn't go through there far enough but following this line up here I'm going to try to mimic that and stick a bunch of these in. Zip. And I don't even have a line made there. I'm just kind of estimating it. Believe it or not, this thing is kind of heavy. Uh, as it is, but it'll it'll be a lot lighter without that newspaper when when it's fired. You have to watch and put a station, a nail station together similar to the way you do glaze stations in your classroom to keep glaze from getting spilled or getting uh, misused or whatever. Um, you don't want nails all over the floor or all over in somebody's foot uh, through their shoe or anything. You know, you just don't want to sit down on one. So you're going to really have to create a nail station for these so that you limit the movement of them through the classroom. So you're you're gonna have to monitor that monitor that or you need someone to come in your classroom like one of the special ed um, uh, 
Paris or something like that to come in and help you keep the nails safe. <laughs> are we keeping the nails safe or are we keeping the kids safe? You know what I mean. So this is going to have a little bit of a punk look to it with the with these carpet tags. They look a little bit like uh, rivets or bolts or something. So it just it does add a bit of a more masculine look to it to have these. old world because they'll still be black when they come out. And all the newspaper will burn off in the bisque fire so you don't have to worry about it getting in the way of the glaze. And they love the idea of this getting fired and, and then just seeing for themselves, does it really come out of there without melting? And yes, it does. So there's a little physics lesson. You can look at the material that these carpet tacks are made of, which I think, let's see if it says on here, can't read that without it looks like iron uh, more of an iron content because of the color and the crude cut of it these other nails are steel and if you have one that's just sticking up like that don't worry about it it'll be the the glaze will be slipped up underneath there um, and it'll create just a little lump there, a little bubble of glaze where that is. So, Okay, so there we go. Now you're going to bisque fire this thing after it dries. Give it, it's going to take a long time for it to dry. Uh, probably, I would say, extra long because, um, because you've got the other stuff inside of it that's drying too so just put the kids names on them make sure they've got their names on them i'm kind of mashing down on the ends here to just keep it cylindrical and it's ready to um, dry and then we'll bisque fire it and then we'll glaze it and fire it again. And then we'll make music. Okay. Thanks for watching. I'll, I'll show you more of this when it, I'm going to have to let it sit for about two weeks, considering the humidity around here, uh, to dry. And then uh, maybe even dry it a little bit in the kiln before I, before I bisque fire it. I don't want it to explode. So don't rush the drying on these teachers. Uh, the kids get real anxious on put them out of their reach in the kiln room so that they can't mess with it in the meantime, but just make sure you have the hole in the end of it so that it'll, it'll be able to um, get rid of the ash and, the, and also the steam and, uh, it, as, it's, as it's firing. Okay. All right. If you have any, I'm going to go ahead and edit this and post it. And if you have any questions, meanwhile, while this is drying or after you see this video, uh, just go ahead and email me. I mean, not email. You can even put it in the comments or you can email me either one if you have any questions. Okay. 
All right, well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the rain stick forest. Cheers. Love ya. Bye-bye.